Okay friends, it's time to get started on our radiator. First, let's move over towards the passenger side of the engine compartment. We're going to find the coolant overflow tank. Make sure it's cool to the touch. You didn't just come back from a nice drive. Assuming it's nice and cool, go ahead and turn this counterclockwise and remove it. Now let's go ahead and safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so we can gain access from underneath. From under the vehicle, let's go ahead and take down this splash shield right here. For this, if you were to look along each side of it, you're going to find several T25 headed screws. For those, I'm going to use this star bit right here, a T25. Let's go ahead and start taking all of them out. Once all your screws are out, go ahead and carefully pull it down, give it a quick inspection, set it aside. Now that we have that out of the way, let's move along to a couple other screws. Looking along the bumper cover, you're going to find several that are supposed to make their way all the way across the front. And then if you were to continue looking up inside of each of the wheel wells, you're going to find several others. Let's just go ahead and start removing all of them. We can do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now let's make our way back underneath the hood. We're going to continue on by removing the four mounting screws that you can see up along the top of the grill. Now the next thing you want to do is carefully grab onto the grill itself. We're going to start pulling it away from the body here. Now you're going to notice it starts flexing down along the bottom. If you were to flex it just enough to see inside, you're going to find that there's a whole bunch of little tabs. Generally, all I want to do is try to reach inside the grill. I'm going to try to hook my fingers onto it, and I'm going to gently press up against the bumper while I try to pull it away. You want to be very careful not to flex your grill too much, in which case you might break it. Sometimes that can be a little harder. You can go ahead and set that aside. Looking along the bottom, you can see all the little tabs. And then you can also see the exact area where they need to press into. Now let's continue on up along this area here. To remove these, you're going to use a T30 Torx bit. There's one here, one in the center, and one on the other side. Now we can grab onto the bumper cover up along the top, and generally I reach into the bottom lower grill. I'm just going to go ahead and grab onto this. We're going to give it a little wiggle and start removing it from the body of the vehicle, being very careful not to damage the paint along the way. Now looking behind this, if you happen to have some fog lights, you're going to want to go ahead and disconnect that. We're going to continue on with our T30 Torx bit. We'll remove this side, the same on the other side. That's going to make it so the radiator can push back a little bit. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's continue on to our lower radiator hose. Now I'm not going to go ahead and disconnect this and start draining the coolant yet because there's a couple other things in this area that I want to deal with before I have coolant dripping on me. The first thing we'll do is disconnect the mounting point for this radiator hose. To do that, I'll just use a small pocket screwdriver, carefully get in between this area, gently pry, separate that clamp. Now we can pull this out of the way. We want to move along to these two bolts. To remove those, we're going to use a T30 Torx bit. It essentially looks like a star. Now we can wiggle this bracket around a little bit. Now we can make our way to this air inlet tube as well. Now for this, there should be a spring clamp on this. Essentially, you just want to go ahead and grab onto the two ears, give it a little squeeze, that's going to release the pressure, and then you should be able to pop this off. Our clamp is missing. Let's carefully grab onto this, pull it right off of there, give it a quick inspection, and now we'll just go ahead and leave this as is. Let's continue on to some wiring. Looking at this connector right here, you're going to find a red locking tab. Now what we need to do with that locking tab is to carefully get behind it with a flathead screwdriver. We're just going to carefully lift it up and now you can tell this is in the unlocked position. 
Continuing with our screwdriver, let's make our way in between this area and there's gonna be a little tab. Essentially, I wanna be right up against the plastic of this, slide it in, and then just carefully twist. Once I've twisted, I'll carefully pull the wiring apart. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, you need to take a peek. If you see any funny colors, it's corrosion and it would need to be dealt with. Now that we have that wiring separated, let's move up to the coolant temp sensor. That's gonna be located on the driver's side of the radiator. To remove that, I'm gonna use a 90 degree pick. We'll just carefully get in between the area that you're supposed to squeeze and the actual wiring itself. We'll give this a little twist. You heard a click, that separated it. Now I can go ahead and grab onto it. We'll give it a tug. Quick inspection as always, set it aside. Now stick with me here. We just have a couple more bolts before we drain the coolant. Right up above the lower radiator hose, you're gonna find a T30 screw that holds the cooling fan to the radiator. We're gonna remove the one on the driver's side and the lower one on the passenger side. Okay, so now it's time to move along to that lower radiator hose. This is gonna be the point that we're draining the coolant from the cooling system. So keep in mind, there will be radiator fluid that comes out of this. You wanna make sure you have hand and eye protection and of course a nice collection receptacle underneath this so you can recycle the fluid as needed. To start draining this, let's go ahead and squeeze our clamp. We're gonna slide it up the hose. Now we can grab this hose, we'll give it a little wiggle. If it feels as though it's stuck on the radiator, be careful not to break it. Typically, if you just use a pick, get in between the radiator and the hose, you'll be able to break it free and you should be able to remove it. As we remove this, keep in mind, this area is underneath it and it could potentially splash pretty much anywhere. Let's move along to the front of the vehicle. Looking along this area, you can see your AC condenser. Yes, it looks a lot like the radiator, but it's not the radiator. The radiator is located right behind it. Now, what we need to do is go ahead and dismount the AC condenser from the radiator. Keep in mind, as you're doing this, the AC condenser is gonna have refrigerant inside of it and it's under a lot of pressure. You do not wanna damage the AC condenser in any way. To remove these bolts, we're gonna use a T30 Torx bit. I'll just carefully come inside this hole once you have it loose, go ahead and grab that mounting bolt. We'll give it a quick inspection. You're gonna find another one located directly below it. Go ahead and remove that one as well, and then do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Okay, so this one's loose now. This is the last one. Keep in mind, there really isn't gonna be very much holding this AC condenser inside of the vehicle. You do still have your AC condenser lines down here. So we wanna make sure that we don't wiggle this around too much and try to damage it in any way. There we are. Now I'm just gonna let this drop down a little bit and typically I like to try to pull it away from the radiator. Okay, we're cruising here. Let's make our way back up top. Up along here, you can see that you have this plastic cover. Along each side of it, there's gonna be a little tab. You can go ahead and grab onto that tab and lift this straight up and off of there. We'll give it a quick inspection, set it aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and start removing this area right here. Using a 90 degree pick, I'm gonna carefully get in between this area, there's a little tab. You can press on that and gently lift up on this a little bit. Do the exact same thing on the other side. And now that's separated, we can carefully lift it up. And now we'll just go ahead and pull this out of the vehicle. So now that we have that out of the way, we want to move along to our last two mounting bolts that hold the fan to the radiator. Now one of them you're going to find is located right directly behind this AC line. It's a little bit hard to get to, but generally you can just kind of push this around a little bit and maybe even lift it up and you should be able to gain access. We'll use a T30 Torx bit to remove this side and then do the exact same thing on the other side. With both of those out of there, let's carefully grab onto this fan. We're gonna give it a little wiggle and start removing it from the vehicle.
Give your cooling fans a quick inspection, set them aside. Let's get this plastic piece out of the way. Looking at the side of it, you're going to find two T25 torque screws. Let's go ahead and remove the pair. With that out of the way, that exposes our last two hoses up along the top driver's side of the radiator. Now I'm gonna start with the upper radiator hose, which is this larger one. We'll go ahead and squeeze on that clamp. We'll slide it down the hose a little bit and slide the hose off of the radiator. Now let's get that other hose. At this point, we have everything disconnected from the radiator. We can go ahead and start wiggling this around. Generally, when I do this, I wanna go ahead and start lifting up on the passenger side as I pull it away. I wanna to try to angle it just in case there's still any coolant left inside the radiator. We'll let this fully drain. Once you feel as though you've drained out enough, go ahead and carefully start pulling it out, being very careful not to damage your AC condenser located in front of this. There it is, friends. Now it's gonna be time to start stripping down our original radiator. There's gonna be several things on it that you're gonna to have to remove and go ahead and install onto the radiator when you go to install it. Let's start on each side. Now for these, you're gonna find some mounts. We're just gonna carefully get in between the radiator and the mount itself and gently try to pry it off. Give your mounts a quick inspection as you remove them and go ahead and set them aside. Now let's move along the bottom of the radiator. For this, we're just gonna carefully get in between this area and we're just gonna gently separate it. We'll give that a quick inspection. Set it aside. Up along the top, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Let's move along to the coolant temp sensor. For this, you're gonna find a metallic clip that goes down from the top towards the bottom. We'll just use some pliers. We can carefully grab onto this and we're gonna to try to pull it out of position. Give that clip a quick inspection. Set that aside. Now we can grab the sensor. For this, you wanna be very careful not to damage it because typically you are gonna reuse it. I'll just carefully grab onto it. I'm gonna give it a little wiggle and pull it up and out. As always, we give everything a quick inspection and then set it aside. All right, let's get ready to install our coolant temp sensor into the radiator. Now, of course, if you're reusing your coolant temp sensor, you wanna go ahead and wipe it down. Make sure you don't see any dirt or debris along this area. Let's go ahead and put it in place inside the radiator. Press it in. Give it a little twist, make sure it feels like it's secured. Continue on with your locking clip. Looking along the sides, you can see there's a groove that each one of these ears needs to fit into. One here, one on the other side. Go ahead and line that up. It's gonna to wanna to slide right directly over the top of the coolant temp sensor, essentially holding it into the radiator. Once it feels as though it's in there, you wanna go ahead and grab that coolant temp sensor and give it a wiggle. Make sure it doesn't wanna slide up and out. If it moves around like this, that's fine, but if it can wiggle up and down, you're gonna have a leak. Now let's move along to the top and the bottom of the radiator. We went ahead and removed these. We need to put them back on. Looking inside the channel, there's a little bit of a lip. We wanna make sure that the lip goes around the radiator as we slide it in place. Start low, press it up against, and then roll it up on. Give it a wiggle to make sure it's secure. Do the exact same thing along the bottom. Let's finish this up with the mounts. We'll just go ahead and slide those right into position. 
And now we can get back over to the vehicle. Okay friends, it's time to get ready to install our radiator. Looking at the bottom of it, you're gonna find two locating tabs. Each one of those tabs needs to fit in down along the body of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and start putting this in place. As you bring it down, once again, be extra careful not to damage your AC condenser. There we are. Sometimes it's easier to put this in if you remove one of your mounts. Just make sure that you remember to put it back in the original position. Now as I slide this down into its original position, just pay attention to those locating tabs along the bottom. Let's slide the hose into position. Make sure you slide these in as far as they can go, and then of course put the clamp back in its original position. As you put them on, just make sure that they're nice and tight. Let's reinstall those cooling fans. Let's line up those upper mounting holes. Start in each of the mounting bolts. Now that we have both of the upper bolts started, it's generally a good idea to go ahead and reach on down there and start in the other two before you go ahead and tighten anything up. Now with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start snugging everything. Now let's install this piece right here. Looking at this area, you can see that I have two little notches. Those two notches need to be in the downward position. Let's get this in place. Start in both of your mounting bolts and then go ahead and snug them up. Let's get this back in place. Now looking at this piece right here, you can see that it has two little ears that curve downward. Each of those ears needs to fit into those holes that I told you about in the other piece of plastic. Once you have it lined up, go ahead and slide it down. And then you're going to lock in each of these locking tabs. I got to click there. Over here is nice and tight. We'll give it a wiggle to make sure it's secure. Put on the cover. Looking at the cover, you can see that it has two ears, one on each side. Those are the locking tabs that hold this down. Line it up in position, make sure it's secure. Let's make our way back underneath the car. We're gonna start reconnecting in our coolant temp sensor. Listen for a click, give it a tug. Now let's move along right here. We'll plug this in as well. I got a nice click, I'm gonna give it a tug. And then, once I'm sure it's secure, lock it down. Let's move along to this area. We're going to have to line this up with its corresponding spot, but at the same time as doing that, we also have to put the hose up onto the box. Once you have this slid into place, make sure you put your clamp back on there. Once again, ours is missing. Now we can move along to our bracket. We're going to put in our two mounting bolts for this. Let's get our lower cooling fan bolts in. Time to remount the lower radiator hose. We're going to go ahead and put this into its position here, but I'm not going to lock it in yet. I'll make my way over to where it connects onto the radiator. Go ahead and slide it up against the radiator and put my clamp on. Give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Follow it over to its mounting point over here and lock it in as well. Now we can move along to resecuring our AC condenser to the radiator. 
you remember that we had to go ahead and move this out of the way, and now you can look through that little hole right there. What you want to do is either lift up or bring down the AC condenser until it lines up perfectly with the corresponding hole on the radiator. The next thing you would want to do is start in each of the bolts before you go ahead and tighten any of them up. Once they're started, then you can snug them. As you do this, make sure they're nice and tight. Now let's go ahead and grab onto that AC condenser where it's mounted to the radiator. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, and as you can see inside this area right here, I've got the hole lined up. We can go ahead and take our mounting screw, we'll start it in there, do the exact same thing on the other side, and then tighten them up. Okay friends, now it's time to install the bumper cover. Let's go ahead and take this and we're gonna start putting it in position. As we're sliding it in place, you wanna be very careful not to scuff your paint in any way. As you start lining up your mounting bolt holes, just go ahead and start in all three of your upper mounting bolts. Once you have all three of those started, make your way to each corner. We're gonna be paying attention to where it comes along the bottom of the headlight. And then also, if you look along this area of the bumper cover, you're gonna see several notches that should line up along this area directly along the fender. That right in there. Once it seems as though it's lined up, just give it a loving bonk. That's gonna hold in once we put in our mounting bolts. Once you have each of the corners done, let's make our way back to our three bolts. We'll go ahead and put those in, and then we can make our way underneath the front of the vehicle. Now we can put in our corner screws. Let's put in our wheel well screws, making their way all the way down the line here. All right, do the same on the other side of the vehicle. Now, while we're under here, we can reconnect in our fog lamps. Go ahead and take that. We're gonna put it right up into place. Listen for a click. Give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Next, you're gonna wanna make sure the wiring's in position so it doesn't get caught on anything. And of course, plug in the other side as well. Let's make our way underneath the bumper cover here. We can start re-securing it. Now that I have all this bolt started, let's go ahead and tighten them up. Now we can get our lower splash shield on here. A couple areas to pay attention to. Looking at these tabs, you can tell that they're very different. This one has a little flippy do that faces towards me. And then of course the one next to it is gonna face the opposite. And then it goes back and forth and back and forth all the way down the line. Now also looking at the larger one on each side, you're gonna see that it has a little tab. That tab needs to line up with its corresponding hole. So now here we go. We're gonna start putting this in position. You're gonna notice that I have the tab with the flippy do facing down coming along the bottom of this plastic. The areas where I'm facing up is gonna go up along the top. Let's keep that in mind as we go down the line. Go ahead and slide it into position. After that, you can go ahead and take all four of your mounting bolts for each side, start them in there, and snug them up. Now I'll do the same on the other side. Now it's time to put the grill back on. Let's have a look at the back side. Now when I went ahead and took this off, I showed you that you have all these little tabs that go across the bottom. I also showed you on the bumper cover, you're gonna find the areas that all of those tabs need to slide into. Now with that in mind, go ahead and line this up in position. We're gonna slide in the bottom half and then we'll line up the upper bolt holes and put in all four of our top mounting bolts.
Okay, now it's time to fill the cooling system. Typically, it's a good idea to have a tool that looks like this that's gonna apply vacuum to the system. If you don't have this, just go ahead and use a funnel. Just keep in mind, you wanna make sure you burp all the air out of the system. Now if you're using a vacuum system that looks like this, you want to go ahead and watch the gauge for a little while. Typically I like to make sure that it doesn't drop. It's common for it to drop a tiny bit, but it needs to stay in the green zone. If it seems as though it's dropping and it makes its way into the yellow, or worse, into the red, that essentially tells you you have a coolant leak someplace and you want to fix that before you go ahead and add any. I'll just pause and wait here for a second. After I've waited, I'll continue on by adding the proper coolant. That's been holding for a while now. Let's start filling it up. All right, at this point I have it preliminarily filled. The next thing that I want to do is go ahead and run the vehicle for a little while. We're going to make sure that we have plenty of heat coming out of the vents and our electric cooling fans turned on. Okay, so at this point, we went ahead and we waited till our cooling fans turned on and we had plenty of heat coming from the vents. Now, of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that I cap this off so it's nice and tight. Now, once this is nice and tight, go ahead and close the hood, take it for a road test. Make sure you have plenty of heat coming from the vents and when you come back, check for any leaks. Thanks for watching.